Hey guys, Heidi from Dog Ship Training. So I've been asked a few times recently um, about tips for people who are having or planning on having a new human baby in their family um, and how to help their dogs in that scenario and what to do to prepare. So first of all, I think it's important to know that things will change. And I know that some people, you know, when they're, when you're pregnant, you, you feel like you want to be clarifying to people that I'm going to still love my dog. And don't get me wrong, that won't necessarily change. Like I still love my dogs as much as ever, even though I've got two children. Um, but your life is going to change. Things are going to have to shift around. Things you would normally do at certain times are going to change. Um, and just your, your general lifestyle. And that's not always a bad thing, but it can be a big deal for your dog. It can feel like a big deal for your dog. And so we really want to help make that transition as smooth as possible. So the best thing you can do for your dog is to make changes that are probably going to have to happen when the baby arrives, happen before the baby arrives gradually, right? Rather than sort of, because when the baby arrives, it is often literally an overnight change, right? There's that change in, you know, you had a baby, you didn't have a baby yesterday and today you have a baby. So a lot changes in that time. And so we want to help prep our dogs so that they that change is um, minimized as much as possible. There's always going to be some changes, there's always going to be things that you didn't know or expect, but we want to prep them as much as possible, right? So even the most happy, chilled out, carefree dogs can be affected by having a a baby come and join the family. Um, and so here's just a few things. I mean, there's so many things like I could spend like three hours talking about this, um, probably days, but here's a few things that I, I, I sort of want you to think about before the new baby comes. So no, one of the things is where does your dog currently sleep, right? So if your dog is currently sleeping in your bed, I suggest you to start to teach them to sleep somewhere else on their own bed or in, if they're in your room, they can be on their own bed, but I would suggest to either have them in a crate or a pen um, or out in the living room or wherever, right? And the reason for this is that it's never, ever, ever recommended um, to have your dog and your baby or child unsupervised. And when you're asleep, you were technically not supervising, right? And your baby is probably going to be sleeping in your room. And especially when you've got a new baby, they're probably going to wake up multiple times in the night. You might be feeding them in bed. They're going to probably doze off in bed. You know, they're going to be in the bed a lot or even just in your room if you're not planning on having them in your bed, in your room, right? And so what we want is for your that not to be a huge shift. So when the baby comes home, you suddenly go, oh my God, I need to feed in the middle of the night and I really don't want to have to go and sit out in the lounge room where it's cold and feed them. I just want to sit in my bed. Um, and so you want to be able to have that already set up. So that's not, again, it's not a shift for your dog. It's not like the baby's here, so see you later. Your dog has already been doing that for months, right? So... That's one of the big ones that I want you to think about is where they sleep because it's a safety issue. Um, and again, that gradual change so that your dog's not sort of surprised by that change. Um, and the reason that you wouldn't want them just on the floor is again, because when you're asleep, they can jump up on the bed, they can jump up on the cot, they could accidentally sit on the baby, um, you know, things like that. And it's, um, again, even if your dog is super friendly and is okay with the baby, supervision is always recommended because accidents happen. Um, now, the other reason is that the dog is probably going to make some noise in the night getting up and down off the bed, even just like going, and you know, doing a big breath, that could be enough to wake a newborn. And when you haven't had much sleep, you really don't want them to wake the newborn. So it can prevent you getting frustrated too. Um, now, the other one, another one is, can your dog settle quietly in the backyard or in another room? Um, and this is really important again, because if you finally gotten the baby to sleep and then you go to put them down in their room and you've left the room, left your dog outside and all of a sudden they can't see you and they start barking and crying and banging on the door, you're not going to be very impressed because you finally got the baby to sleep and now the dog's woken them up again. So you want to be able to make sure that you can do that. Also, because as the baby gets a little bit older and is having, you know, time on the floor and just sort of, you know, doing things on their own on the floor and you want to duck off and, you know, get some dinner ready or go to the toilet or whatever and your baby's on the floor, 
You want to be able to put your dog outside or whatever because, again, we don't want to leave them unsupervised. So you want to be able to put them somewhere and know that they can be okay with that. And, if we again, if we introduce that now, that doesn't have to be a bad thing for them. They're just having their own time. They learn that that's a completely normal part of their day and then the, the baby can be on the ground and it's no problem. Um, if you've got a bit of a dog, a dog who's a bit nervous of things, changes, um, new, you know, sounds and sights and things like that, get your baby stuff early. So like prams and toys and cots and rockers and all of that sort of jazz, set it up and just leave it around the house. So they just sort of get used to that becoming part of the furniture. It's just normal. Anything that the baby has that makes noise, great play baby sounds. Now it's not going to be the same thing. They're not stupid, but it's going to help to desensitize them to it. And it can help you recognize if there's any early signs of your dog being unsure. So play like YouTube, baby crying sounds and baby babble and all of that sort of stuff. And you're going to be able to play those sounds. Um, so that's definitely one that you want to be aware of is just to get some stuff early. Also, if you're going to walk your baby and walk your baby in the pram and your dog, get your dog used to walking with the pram before the baby comes. Um, you know, just walk with an empty pram in that way. You know, if your dog does happen to make a few mistakes, it's okay when they're learning because the baby's not actually in the pram. Um, now, does your dog jump up without an invitation? Now, when you're not carrying a newborn um, and you're not just sort of recovering from childbirth, you you know, it's not as big a deal if your dog makes a mistake and jumps up on you. But if you're carrying a baby or you're a bit, um, you know, your core is not quite right because you've just birthed a human, um, then you may need to consider teaching your dog beforehand to only jump up or put feet on you on invitation and that way you can still invite them up um, but you get the both to both worlds you can invite them up when you want to so if you wanted to crouch down and invite your dog up onto your lap or whatever you can do that but they're not going to do it unless they hear the magic word so that's a really important one I would also recommend to do that with furniture and couches um, things like that because if you're sitting on the couch and or if you're trying to change baby's nappy on the couch next to you things like that and your dog has not learned to not wait for an invitation they're quite easily going to be able to jump up might not see baby might jump on baby or you just want some you just want you're trying to feed you're trying to get positions right you're trying to do all of that sort of stuff and if your dog's there again it's causing unnecessary frustration for you and for your dog because they don't know the expectations why am i all of a sudden not allowed to sit next to you and put my feet on you and do all of these things but again if you introduce that gradually beforehand and make that the expectation that's just a normal part of their life by the time baby comes and that again it doesn't mean that when baby goes down for a sleep and you want to have a little cuddle on the couch with your dog you can invite them up but it's on invitation only and that's again safety wise um, really important um, any other changes that will be happening exercise and walking will somebody else be walking your dog so right now if you're doing all the walking um, will somebody else be doing part of that for you when you're on maternity leave or when the baby's new or will your dog be getting less walks or walked somewhere different because you need to be able to walk somewhere where there's a pram and you can't go like on a hike up a hill in a forest with a pram you know like so make those changes gradually so that again it's just normal for them by the time they're not associating that change with the baby arriving it's just a normal thing part of their life by then. Um, so that's a really good one. Same with like dinner times. If they're used to you only feeding them and prepping their meals, switch it up and get somebody else to help you out. And so that that way, when you're in hospital or if you're feeding or trying to settle baby or whatever, um, you know, at, on those early stages, they call it the fourth trimester because it feels like a baby's attached to you for months um, because that, you know, they want to be close to you. And so sometimes you're going to need to do things like that. Um, so that kind of brings me into can your dog stay on their bed and lie there until they're released? And this is a great one because you're going to need, you're going to do a lot of things one handed, right? And so at the moment, if you went to answer your front door because the postman's here or whatever, and you are using one hand to open the door and one hand to hold your dog back, that's not always going to be possible. So you want to be able to teach your dog to stay in their bed so that whatever happens, you can teach them to put it there. I remember one time I was super grateful for this was um, just after I had my daughter and she filled her nappy and more, it went everywhere. And I was super grateful that I could send the dogs and get them to lie on their beds while I cleaned up the mess so I didn't have dog noses in all of it as well. So um, 
So, you know, there's so many uses for that. Um, but it's a good one to remember, especially too, because you're probably going to be having visitors over a lot. It's a great one to get them to learn to settle on their beds. Um, so get a doll. Even though, obviously, again, your dog's not stupid. They're going to know it's not a human. But um, walk around the house and do baby stuff. Um, so this is going to help your dog get used to you, like, doing this weird bob thing. You can teach them, you know, not to jump up and do those things. It's going to help you recognize anything that might be a problem area. Because if you're holding a doll and then you start doing this and your dog's like, oh, we're jumping around, cool, and they try and jump up on you, obviously, that's going to be an issue. So you can start working on things like that. If you go to let the dog outside and he, like, pushes you over and you've only got one hand or whatever those are things you're going to want to work on um if you pretend to put the baby down on the change table then your dog's like vroom onto the change table you know that's something you've got to work on so all of these things we can make them a positive training scenario we can make it something that's gradual and take the pressure off our dogs getting it perfect the first time um, and start teaching them before baby comes so that when baby comes it's reliable and it's something that we can um, you know we just have to reinforce when baby's there we're not actually teaching that skill the dog knows it we're just reinforcing it that now it still applies even though the baby's there um, so Though there's so many things to think about, but those are just a few things. Um, I would definitely recommend, again, to sort of just assess your household. One of the biggest things you can do, um, I think, is to make sure that your dog can be on okay on their own. Because if at the start you come home and there is any issues, so, um, you know, your dog's really worried about the baby or growling or, you know, any behavior that your concerns you, if at the very bare minimum you can put your dog outside and they can just chill out on their own until you get an expert to come and help you in that scenario, at least you've got a dog who can go outside and be relaxed and it's not stressful for everybody when you've got this brand new baby at home as well. So at the very bare minimum, I want you to be able to do that get them to settle somewhere um, and be able to go in and out of the rooms and do whatever you want to do and they can just chill in their own area because that could be super helpful in case you need it. So I hope that helps somebody. If anybody has any questions, let me know. If anybody would like to find out more about what I do, you can head to dogmanshiptraining.com and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.